welcome, welcome very much to Conversations. And I needn't say it, we've had it so many times, but it's such a pleasure to welcome a dear, 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 dear friend of mine in the world, and that's Colia Clark. She's well known to many people here in New York City for her often appearing on Manhattan Network. She's been a candidate uh, on the Green Party, and uh, she's been active in politics, and she's been active in civil rights matter. We have her billed as a civil rights pioneer and also a peace activist. And she's also been very interested in more recently uh, in a particular way with, with the country of Haiti. And as always, she's following it in a systems way, uh, the movement toward uh, increased uh, justice on the planet. And Colia, mm -hmm. welcome. It's so good to welcome you to the set. Welcome Always back to New Always wonderful York. being here with you. Yeah. Harold is such a fantastic, magnificent interviewer. And also, just a great conversation with us. I just love being with you. I think there's a difference between an interview and a conversation. Yeah, well, a conversation, well, tell me about it. Well, I'm not sure, but I think an interview bespeaks linear, what they would call linear. Okay. You know, it's a PowerPoint, one point. point. It's structured. Mm -hmm. It's a structured thing, whereas a conversation is like two guys jamming. All right. Uh, uh, without a score. Got a lady jamming here. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> right, right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you, you just, you just, it's, it bespeaks spontaneity. You're right. It, 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 it's, yeah. it's, 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 it's not, it doesn't have that structure. Yeah. I, I agree with you. Yeah. Well, that I mean, uh, but anyway, uh, I've been doing it for a long time and you've been doing your work. I think it's worthwhile taking a couple of minutes. You got started down. When did you first get the first inklings that you were going to be such an effective civil rights organizer before civil rights was uh something other than some dream, <laughs> but it became very real and so forth. You got involved just as a young kid, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, I was very, very young. Very, very, very young. Of yeah. course, my, uh, I should say the burning started with the death of Emmett Till. I was yeah. 15, he was 14. Right. Oh, right. And yeah. so yeah. the death of one in one's old age group yeah. uh, is very troubling. But earlier that year, yeah. There was a young woman down in Montgomery, Alabama, who was my age, right? Uh, who decided to take a seat on a bus. And before, you know, before well, this uh, is about Rosa. nine months before Rosa Parks. Yeah, right. Uh huh. Uh -huh. And so when Claudette Colvin took that seat on the bus, and she God would later bless be, her, yeah. oh, she's a wonderful young woman. They, yeah. they're, they're pushing now. Hard to do, wasn't it? Hard to do within the context. God, of hard that, to do. Uh, I was mean, it was like risk taking of death. Risk. Yes, indeed. Yeah, right. Right. And right. but she didn't believe in nonviolence. You know, they hauled yeah. her off of that bus. Uh huh. Uh, fighting. So uh -huh. one of them went to the hospital. One of the two people, police officers, <laughs> hauled <laughs> off the bus. <laughs> <laughs> and the other one pulled her on the juvenile court, and uh, I do mean pulled her on uh, the juvenile uh, court. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this was pre nonviolence. Right. And right, so this is uh, pre King, this is yeah. pre the nonviolent movement as yeah, we know it. Yeah. Uh, and so this young woman was an inspiration for all of us. And they kind of, you know, you hit it, flash some news, mm. 15 year old down in Montgomery. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> so right. we and didn't have TV. You know, it, I, we're hearing this from, I'm hearing this from the radio, you know. It was just so ingrained in yeah, the society. Yeah. And yeah. so forth, like yeah. that. And so, uh, you know, uh, so I just take my hat off to people that just get a spark that gets something going. Yeah, you know? well, anyway, that yeah. was that was the spark. But I grew up in a family that yeah. um, I don't want to call them revolutionaries, they were not, but they certainly believed in fighting. Yeah. And, and, and I mean self defense fighting or any kind of fighting for that matter. Yeah. To, um, to preserve what you had and also to be able to break the back. Of segregation. Yeah, it was a major so, issue of our yeah. century. It yeah, be, it was. That happened. It, yes. it culminated, yes. of course, with King. And, and all if that, this yeah. right wing uh, yeah. can have that way, it'll be back real soon. I think it does. It has oh yeah, I mean, it's, it's still there. It, it's still, it's still, the, it's still a segregation mentality in the minds of many. If, everybody remembers Joe the Plumber. Joe yeah. the Plumber. Yeah. Was, yeah. Remember, uh, <laughs> yeah, you can't right. put him on his staff. <laughs> right, 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 right. Well, Joe the Plumber mm. said we need a white Republican president. Yeah. I mean, so just that language, a white mm. Republican right, president, right, not just right. a Republican president. Yeah, yeah. So we're headed in that. And yeah. then, you know, this past weekend, um, the right wing demonstrated. There's a lot that went between when you first did that and now. Oh, well, God, but that's we're, the world we're, between. We're, we're, <laughs> Stokely, you became friends with oh, Stokely yeah, and Snake yeah, so, and all that. Yeah, yeah. Stokely, uh, uh, who would become Kwame Ture, of yeah, course. Yeah. Uh, I met Stokely in 61 in Jackson. He'd come Way in yeah. with the Freedom Rides. And right, yeah. of course, they were very active in, in Jackson. And and there was this cute young man. He was dating a girlfriend yeah. of mine. Yeah. Oh, really? Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so uh, he was one when I funny. saw him, I saw him. He was one cute kid. Yeah, yeah. And he, he was also <laughs> really smart. Oh, and he was also, you know, one of the things word, I yeah. remember more with him. I was quite friendly with him quite a bit. Yeah. He was so funny. 
Yeah. He was one funny man, although he's serious, but he was really funny. We used yeah, to I think laugh that was up a storm. typical of civil rights men. Y yeah, yeah. That's, a, that's a defense You kind of needed it. Yeah, yeah, right. You kind of yeah, needed right. it uh, because if you didn't have that, that humor built into the spirit. That's right. We would have been broken early on. And I think it's true of a lot of people progressive. A lot of the things like Mel Brooks and that kind mm -hmm, of stuff mm -hmm. where they, you, you can just, or, or now it's the comedy channel with Colbert <laughs> and, and Daly and all that. So the humor is a way of dealing with it in a very serious way. Yeah, yeah. 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 I was looking at some movie here recently and they um, had the Bevel character in it. Yeah, and of yeah. course Bevel had a lot of, lot of pain at the end of his life. But he was uh, down in North Carolina and um, there was a big demonstration, and so he had come to work with the demonstration. Mm -hmm. And so everybody was already doing what they had to do, and so Bevel arrives late. Mm -hmm. So he walks up to the police barricade, and um, he announces that this leader is coming. And they say, well, yeah, is he coming? They say, mm -hmm. well, what does he look like? Yeah. And he said, well, you know, you'll have on a dashiki, mm -hmm. and it'll have a big old... <laughs> <laughs> what we have around his neck, yeah. be hanging around his neck, yeah. big yeah. across, yeah. and that's he standing when the doctor yeah, came right, right, right. And so, yeah. Kipper, what is it? Oh, <laughs> 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 you know, so that, that kind of yeah. humor. But yeah. then there was humor that uh, Curtis Hayes is probably the most pious Curtis Muhammad these days. Okay, but no, in no, those yeah, days yeah. in Mississippi, he was Curtis Hayes. God, and, it must be something being Mississippi. You yeah, know, I mean, yeah, I mean down home, deep yeah. south and yeah, all that kind of red dug up in Detroit, where it's a little bit different there. And also, not only the black thing, but also the Amer Indian people. Oh no, we no, aired no, a program no, that aired no, yesterday no, no, no. from when this program was going to air with mm -hmm. Dr. Joy and the people who were talking about the sovereign nations. Yeah, and I think that probably ties into the work that you're doing recently. You're focused oh, on yeah. the country of Haiti and the countries of the whole Western, well, the whole Western hemisphere. hemisphere. Yeah. Yeah. I was coming in from Costa Rica a couple of years ago. Yeah. And um, we came in through, we didn't come in through Miami, we came in through uh, oh, another town down there. Anyways, yeah. we got off, as I got off the plane and I was, you know, went through customs and I was coming out, all of a sudden I heard the word Choctaw. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I turned and there was a, an indigenous person standing there and he had yeah. identified me as Choctaw. Uh. Well, I do have that as a part, we part of the heritage. Is that, is that one of the Indian nations, Choctaw? Yeah, Choctaw. It's oh, okay. the largest in, in the Mississippi region. Is that right? Okay, yeah, yeah, and it, okay. it was able to maintain a lot of land. <coughs> oh, wow, laws okay, yeah. Because it had been in, uh, an accomplice mm -hmm. along with a part, of course, of the Cherokee okay. nation um, yeah. with the British and the French yeah. against the other indigenous tribes. But and by and large, the Western European thing was able to ride roughshod over the indigenous indig 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 cultures, as well as, yeah. as well as eliminating as best they possibly could within the black slaves that they brought into slavery here, any sense of identity at all. I think it was worse in North America than almost anywhere else in the world, perhaps. I'm not sure. Yes, I, I yeah. don't know that. I think that what we have to do is consider the Africans use signifiers, and I think that that art of signification yeah. with such a camouflage, and if you look at North America, yeah. where most of the Africans that were brought into here yeah. were very young. If you looked at Baltimore in the 1840s, the average age was under 14 years, around 14. Is that right? Under, okay. under I the didn't age of 14. That, yeah. yeah, very, very, very young. Uh huh. Uh huh. But if you look at that and you remember that they would divide us up so that they would try not to get the same groups, uh -huh. so you wouldn't have this language, would not be able to talk with each other. Right. So right. you brought in people who didn't have any associations. These more than 2,000 different ethnic groups are being. Pulled out of Africa. There were that uh, many. Ethnic, that oh many. yeah, that's still still is a. Is that is there a language basis to that? And a language basis to this There's as well. Much? Even though you will have two thousand uh, languages. Different. Well, not two. Well, you, well, two thousand different cultural Culture, ethnic right. groups. Okay, yeah. But many of yeah. them are going to speak similar languages. Yeah, right. So if you looked at the Diop, the, uh, the the great uh, uh, archaeologist, physicist, did a lot of work on looking at at uh, the different language groups. Yeah and their kinship yeah. when he talks about the cultural unity of yeah. Africa. Right, right, right. So you will get the Bantu language system, which yeah. is the largest of them. Is that right? Yeah, yeah okay. so you'll get numbers of Greek cut across Africa. So you somebody may use an M, somebody may use a B. Yeah, right. Uh, but, there's this, but they're different languages. Yeah. Imagine that showing up at one space at one time when yeah. you tried to divide them all up. Yeah. People just didn't speak each other's languages, right, so, so it right, wasn't right. that easy. But they had a common denominator right, right, called right. the drum.
Uh, that's right. I got a good friend, Ornette Coleman. Yeah. He said he thought music was there before language. I do too. You know? I do too. I think music created language. All right. That, that's sound, really interesting. Sound, when you talk about yeah. the signifier looking out into the universe and right. bringing it back in and creating representation, yeah. I think that music probably created language, you know, because yeah. babies do. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, right. You know that's right. That's so, right. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think there's about 5,000 languages in the world, and we're um, losing a lot of them. Yeah, and that's a really tragic because Africa is on the brink of losing most of its language. Languages are losing a lot. Yeah, I mean, Maybe. really, yeah, not just languages, trouble. but cultures as well. And that's yeah. why Stephen Biko talked about yeah. that what the imperial colonizer was after was the mind. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. It's not the body, yeah. not really your work, your, but your mind. Yeah, if yeah, you could control yeah. your mind, yeah. then you could right. wipe away all of this. And so the African here, the drum, uh -huh. and begin to look at the drum and ring dances right. and uh -huh. all of that mm -hmm. uh, cut across cultures. So there right. was this unifying themes that mm -hmm. ran through cultures. Mm -hmm. And so therefore the African here may appear to have lost all. Most of us were Muslims yeah. who got off those boats. We got off from Muslim groups, and no, no doubt about it. So growing up, you know, I would, we would sing Oh, well, the idea of Ruba fall and, on oh, my oh. knees, uh, well, turn my face yeah. to the rising sun. Uh -huh. What does the sun rise? It uh, rises in the east. In the east. Yeah, right, right. So you didn't yeah. open a program That's in the south, uh -huh. in the African community, uh -huh. without that song. Is that right? Yeah, you, you opened know, it with that. Well, Even I'm the civil rights movement. Girl, I'm learning, yeah. So yeah, we yeah. shall overcome close, but... Yeah. That song opened us. But so then you look at that, and then I couldn't hear nobody pray. No. I mean, it's through everything we could do, way down yonder by myself. Yeah. And I couldn't hear nobody pray. Uh -huh. So you began to see that. But yet the African traditions yeah. held, yeah, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you with these two met, but the Muslim did not destroy African right. yeah. religious culture that's in the same way in which Christians do. That's right. Fard and, uh, and uh, Muhammad Ali, I mean, they, not Muhammad Ali, but uh, what was the name? Elijah the Muhammad. Elijah Muhammad yeah. in Detroit, a storefront. Yeah. They started yeah. that. And he was saying there was a religion that wasn't racist, you know, yeah. as, the, uh, as yes. the culture from Europe was, is yes. seen as yes. such. And it, it was terrible. Anyway, it's such an interesting story in all of that. And then you've been carrying on and doing great work and so forth. And we want to talk some particularly because your part You've been taking a great deal. You took uh, one last quick sidebar and everything. You took careful attention, as did I, to the country of Libya oh. and to the Muammar Gaddafi as setting a possible pattern that was ahead of history's curve yeah, that should have been taken advantage of rather than murdered and overthrown by our CIA and DIA. And they can't murder the man. Yeah. They will not murder He's going to emerge as a martyr, uh, I, think. I think. I think, I think he's already emerged as a martyr, and it's, but his work... I mean, his work, whether we're talking about that satellite that's floating out there, that African, yeah, that African satellite, satellite yeah. and the one that Al Algeria was working on. I mm -hmm. don't know where it is at this point. Mm -hmm. I was in Algeria a couple of months ago. Oh, were you? Really? You came yeah, around. The, well, yeah. you know, we have to, we have to, we, yeah, uh, good. we have to understand there's been an invasion yeah. of Africa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that, how shall I put it, that colon colonialism didn't yeah. go away. Yeah, we got no. something called neocolonialism. Yeah, that's what we got now. Yeah. And that we all... That blend is, 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 is worldwide. So mm -hmm. if you look at what's happening in, 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 in Asia, mm -hmm. and then you look at what's happening in Africa, yeah. you, you see it from a religious perspective, usually because people say, you know, the Muslims are being jumped on. However, mm. when you look at what's happening in Haiti, yeah. and when you look at the France in particular, who's also got her foot on the throat of Guadalupe yeah. uh -huh. right now, mm -hmm. um, that, that, that great strike that they had in 2009, probably mm. the most famous in recent history, where more than one-fourth of an island's yes. population yeah. participates in the strike. Something like that might be brewing in Haiti. Oh, yeah. Something like a massive uprising. Oh, I was so... Uh, and we got to get down I there. I wish you, you could have been with back. me. I got, I, I would got love the, to have been there I've got all this stuff on the telephone, on yeah. the video and in yeah. camera shots, but yeah. I didn't get a chance to transfer That's yet. That's all right, yeah, okay. But Kim Ives from Haiti Liberté has done a lot of work, and he has transferred a lot of this. But if you could have been at Port-au-Prince with me, yeah, just to recent, me, Port-au-Prince, you've been there, this, this you've been there a yeah, number of times. Two weeks now, two weeks ago now. No, but you've been in the past also. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, my goodness, yes. I know. Yeah. But I was there for the manifestation. The United States invaded in 91, and then we invaded in honest in 93 and mm -hmm. took Aristide out to Venezuela. Yeah. See, most people 
considered. To Venezuela? I thought yeah. he went to Central the first Africa. Ki that's the second kidnapping oh, in 2004. Well, I, didn't I didn't know. But no, yeah. we took him out in 1993 mm -hmm. to Venezuela. I didn't know that. Yeah, of course, okay. Venezuela is another story now. We're going to take over that shit in 2004. Yeah. 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 History <laughs> the last, the last yeah. thing you need. Yeah, right. Remember, they took him to Africa yeah, right. uh, uh, to a dictatorship. Yeah, right. Uh, but <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> to take him to, mm -hmm. to Chavez? I don't yeah. think so. <laughs> yeah, right, 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 right. No, so there's a lot There's a lot of popular stuff stirring in the country. Oh, no. Of, uh, I mean, it's America. not uh, just. Uh, uh, no, uh, uh, yeah. you know, one of Chavez's last great movements was a creation. I can never keep the name of the new organization of, uh, of, uh, of American, uh, of, uh, you know, South American states and South mm -hmm. American Caribbean states. Mm -hmm. They have a new organization that's replaced the old um, organization of American states that they have. So, okay. what they have now, the new one. Uh, met when I was in in Algeria in 2011. Uh -huh. Recent, yeah. Yeah, no, that was I went there recently, but uh, no, 2012. That's about yeah, when you were going to. You were going when to I was Libya. there, they yeah. were meeting. No, that yeah. was I went there the first time uh -huh. in 2000. Second, I, I was there in 2011, following Libya, but I went last year, 2012, yeah. and then this year. But when I was there, that group was meeting uh -huh. in Venezuela. Uh -huh. uh, uh, the only uh, as I said, political unit that was not in Venezuela for the meeting of this new organization of American states uh -huh. was Puerto Rico. Really? He was the okay. only one not there. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Only political unit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Everybody was That's there and yeah. with a common understanding yeah. that the United States and Canada were not welcome. Uh-huh. No, they're not Boy, part of it. There's something And they're stirring. still meeting. They're still, I mean, there's a steering, there's a rumbling going on. Um, mm. Uh, we see that, you know, I, you know, we look at Uruguay, there's a rumbling going on. There Ecuador, is, yeah. there's a rumbling going on. Costa Rica. Ecuador is Co solid. They, they're, oh, yeah. they're protecting Yeah, Snowden. Honduras, yes, I yeah. mean, yeah. Yeah, you know, Nicaragua has always been on, on, uh, on the stage. But if you look at even Costa Rica, when I was in Costa Rica a couple of years ago, I was struck by the fact that there was this mass demonstration and I, it surrounded us. It was walking down the street. No fooling, really. And I was like, what on earth is happening? You know, you get kind of nervous because I don't speak Spanish. Yeah. And they were all, you know, in these costumes and was obviously some kind of eco-friendly group. Yeah. Um, but they were demonstrating against a, a lawsuit that has been filed in the international courts uh -huh. to force the nation of Costa Rica to allow drilling for oil. Wow. Okay. And that's all a part of, yeah. of, of these tariffs we have. You yeah. know, this NAFTA, CAFTA, yeah. and IMF and World Bank thing is mm. the devil in, mm -hmm. in, in, yeah, yeah, in yeah, a red yeah. dress. I'll name it's it neo, something. Yeah. It's neocolonialism oh, I mean, is it's what horrible. it is, really. And it's but, to, but to say that a nation does not have the right to block you from <laughs> drilling for <laughs> oil, in, I mean, come on now. Your play, raping your yeah. resources. Yeah, so right. they were demonstrating. I don't know what the outcome was. I haven't been able to go back to it. I have that in also... Um, I'm going to send you a lot of stuff because yeah, we Costa got that Rica on camera. My granddaughter, yeah. who also just had a wonderful exhibit down in D.C. Really? She's an emergent photographer. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> Good for her. Good for her. Well, yes. she just came yeah. back from South Africa. Then her group was one, that college group that just won the Cannes Film, F Film Festival. She was a part of that team. Won the Cannes Festival? Yeah. What, what did what? They, a group that they won a They did a, a piece reward? on homelessness. Oh, okay, yeah. good. Yeah, right. Apparently, it's uh, something they do every year associated with that's attached to the Cannes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and these are college students, by and large. Who oh, you're, you're getting around a lot, and you've been quite a bit of a focus on Haiti. Oh, Haiti is a... Haiti is, is, is a story, and it's, it's, it's really... It's part of my life, you know. They had the, they, they, you call attention to it, uh, in fact, that that was the first democracy in the Western That's Hemisphere. That's the first democracy in the world. Maybe it's worth touching on that, because that was all... You know, that that's something that's uh, got historical roots, you know. Oh, ain't no doubt about yeah. it. But for me, it has... You know, I'm from Jackson, Mississippi. Right, right. Right. Which used to be Le Fleur's Bluff, the Gulf of Flowers. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So that's where I'm from. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Uh, the British sold Jackson, Mississippi, mm -hmm. <laughs> sold, uh, you remember, the, the Mississippi, Louisiana Territory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, not the British, but the the The, uh, the, 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 the French. Napoleon, yeah. In an effort to raise the funds mm. to break the back of the Haiti, Haitian independence movement. Was that really true? Yeah, that's why they sold it. Wow. And it didn't help them any because well, they got to help me out of them anyway. But um, or something, or you know, 
the, the Louisiana Purchase. Yeah, yeah. 19, 18, yeah. Uh, well, 1801, when, when 1803. Yeah. What was his name again, the fellow that led that? Lutz, Louboutin started That's, it. Right, right, right. But it's and that Desiline was, that will take it to the next. Yeah, but what Louboutin year was, are we talking? What year we're talking about 1792. We're talking about Louboutin. 1792. Way yeah, the hell back, yes. and they yes. made a serious revolution. That's right, and out of that, toward democracy. Yeah, so they played, yeah. they played uh, the Louboutin, and they, he got caught all up in, you know, in the pomp and the circumstances, yeah. and right. and happened, thought yeah. that he could trust the French, and yeah. of course they, he went to France to with his peace feather. Yeah, and they just arrested him, put him there, in in, in some little island, isolated him, and Good. did all kind of manner of things to yeah. him until he died. Yeah, yeah right. But right. on the island uh -huh. was Desaline, mm -hmm. and Desaline mm -hmm. was a different kind of a character. Mm -hmm. And not only was there Desaline, there was also a brother from the Dominican Republic. Remember, mm -hmm. this was the two two side by side. Santo Domingo, yeah. And so they fought each other for a while, but uh -huh. then after fighting each other, Desaline got them to agree that they would end the fighting. Mm -hmm. And together beat the French. Mm -hmm. Oh, I see. Right, right. So this is what they did. But they, 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 they gained forces against the common enemy. <laughs> Amen. That, that can't be allowed. Amen, brother. <laughs> <laughs> and then they wanted to divide and conquer. Yeah, those people, so they used everything. Yeah. They had Bookman, who was from Haiti, uh -huh. who was traditional African religion. You know, Haiti's mm -hmm. religion is the traditional African religion. Okay. Haiti's language is is really the mixture. They they want to say African, but it's a mixture of Creole and. A mixture of French and We have a lot of Yoruba and input and in Cuba and that. You have Santeria. Yeah, sure. And, uh, you know, about all, all the Western uh, Hemisphere. Chago and all that kind yeah, of stuff. Yeah, we had Dr. Buzzard being our most famous on the East Coast. Right. Hajan the Conqueror in the South. But uh, the traditional African religion is alive today as it was yesterday. I'll be darned. Okay, good. Yeah, now, let's listen, let's on. bring One of the things that, let's bring it. That's really interesting. It, it, it's just, and we can talk to Colin But let forever. me just tell you that yeah, the young, young Haitians, that to be in Haiti at this conference yes. of, of young people. Yeah. Remember, yeah. said so the elder groups were there. And to watch them really practice pure democracy. Really. The struggle in the room among each other. When they didn't, you know, they would go after each other and scream and yell and holler, but they didn't leave until they did what the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee used to do uh, in America what? as they left with a consensus. All right. They well, left with a consensus. We in this case, this consensus is that the United Nations yeah. must leave Haiti immediately uh -huh. and that the you, UN okay, must really. be held responsible for cholera and they must pay reparations. Wow, those are big things. Those yeah, and then they issues. went out and did the big manifestation where tens upon tens of thousands of wow of Cité Soleil, the area there where the Siki, the mm. Siki, which yeah. is what we call sugar, uh -huh. uh, where they yeah, create right. the Siki. Yeah. I said, oh, they knew the sugar yeah, was yeah, bad. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know that that was uh, really yeah. but I like that. Yeah. Um, just tens of thousands. Yeah. But this is where America That's invaded and killed people. the thousands of young men from Cité Soleil was talking with me, and he was talking about how the U.S. troops came in in 91, 93, and just went from house to house, killing families. My God, house to house, and yeah. just imagine the poverty of this area, and they're moving through this poverty. Ninety-one, stricken. ninety-three. That's when they're invading Iraq. And, and this is that. also the when they are. George Bush. That's first right. Bush, and this yeah. is when they are taking Aristide out the first time. Yeah. House to house. So this was a, this was a Cité Soleil, and and the area where the sugar refinery, which are now closed, mm. were lo was located, was the strongest space for Aristide. Uh -huh. So this is when these two areas are just killed up masses. Well, what's happening Thousands now? Aristide is back. Aristide is back. He was in South Africa a while, and he was there. Yeah, he everything. came back. The sister from Democracy Now, yeah. Anna Goodman. Yeah, she went with rode him in on with the him. Airplane. The yeah, brother, yeah. the uh, Danny Glover, and all of them. They, they brought him back. He him. came back with a, a, with a big now. Does role, he but he remained quiet. But lately, he has been supporting. He's getting older. A brother, one thing. of course, yeah. he's older. Yeah. Suppo supporting one of the candidates for president, and uh -huh. um, it happens to be one of the men, that, unfortunately, who was involved in his ouster the second time, huh. unfortunately. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's a lot going on, but Aristide is still on the scene. They love him. Yeah. Um, so when they were going into, uh, coming out of Cité Soleil, we went, the, the thousands are just moving from every which way. Right. And they're coming out all these little, little narrow roads, and as I say, look like they were coming up out of the earth. Uh -huh. um, but as they entered the sugar refinery area, which is the final area, because this is where the big piece took place, the final piece. Uh -huh. They were screaming his name. I mean, they were screaming his name, but they also screaming the name of a young man uh, who is um, just a senator. He's not an announced candidate for, mm -hmm. for the presidency, mm -hmm. 
but I was struck that they were screaming his name as well. Yeah, I said, oh, this right. is interesting. But he has, um, he's a senator, uh -huh. and he's worked just, just vigorously well. They have a bike the senator to like now the Senate mm -hmm. vote nine to nothing uh -huh. that the United Nations must go. The United Nations must, must go, go, and the United yes. Nations has been brought in there as peacekeepers? Or it hasn't what? had a moment's peace. Uh, I know. It has yeah. not been a moment. It's just such well, a what, tragedy. What's the reality behind the use of the United Nations or any principles All over the world. I mean, yeah. we were sitting yeah. at the UN yeah. last Thursday with mm. the Security Council. Mm -hmm. We had that meeting with them, with their, with their South American and Caribbean sector. Yeah. Um, and a, a brother named Gardner, who was their representative. Yeah. It was very interesting. Before he came in the room, someone asked one of his workers, um, his staff there, say, you know, where was the UN? And they started out Chad, and mm. they went to Congo, oh. and they said Mali. And, and it's just, the UN is, is, is invaded Africa. Mm -hmm. But they don't, everywhere they are, mm -hmm. There is this great negativity. Uh -huh. When uh -huh. I first met with the UN in Haiti in 2009 with the International Commission of Inquiry on Haiti, yes. we were there doing, you know, doing um, <coughs> research on the issues that we were hearing about. Yeah. Um, and that, that the Brazilian general that we were talking to, one said something that really troubled me, and he got it from then on from me, that Haiti... Uh, was like a woman you could have your way with. Yeah. I was okay. Like, oh, yeah, really? Yeah, 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 right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah meet yeah, the woman. Really. <laughs> meet the woman you could have your way with. <laughs> yeah, <baby. laughs> yeah. Right. Well, it's but, uh, yeah. But he 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 talked about that the UN was running Haiti. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Which I, you know, are you really? Mm -hmm. Mm hmm. And then we've done the research, and if you look at WikiLeaks, you'll find out that three months prior to the UN being called for. Brazilians were already, troops were already entering Haiti. Uh -huh. There were already brigands being set up in Haiti. So the Haiti piece was obviously a planned piece, United States, Canada, France, and they used Brazil, promising them a seat on the Security Council, uh, which was a joke. Um, yeah, because right. they, got, they got abused, and right now yeah. uh, Brazil is really subject to lawsuit because that lawsuit that came out of um, the Hague one about three years ago yeah. said that you, you, know, you can't sue the UN directly, mm. but you can sue this lawsuit that says a precedent where you can sue the head of those troops. A person. The, 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 the uh, troops, uh, the, not the troops, the nation that heads no, the troops. No, you, you can sue the person that's the head, the political head of an entity, you can sue that? You, you can, can sue that for war crimes or anything like that's that? That's right, and you, yeah. but you can now sue the yeah. nation uh -huh. that's heading the troops, and that just happens to be Brazil, Yeah, which is, you know, because it's been a bear, an economic upsweep. Brazil is really on the move in yeah. terms of its political economy. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Um, but Brazil has also been the biggest backers, the largest unions, and the cut union, and the other unions, the black unions, uh -huh. the teachers unions. Uh -huh. They have all been big backers of not only Mumia Abu Jamal being mm -hmm. freed from jail, yeah. but also of uh, the union getting out of Haiti. And yeah. Barbara Corrales was up here this time representing the cut. And I tell you, very strong woman, uh, very powerful, uh, reminded where? me. From where? From Brazil. From Brazil. Okay, and yeah, right. So huh? she was a, the, the spokesperson for the delegation. Uh -huh. um, and just very strong, that union. We had the largest union from Argentina with us last year. Argentina. That's come in. This year we had Mexico unions in. You know, we'll get in these unions, Trinidad, Tobago. Mm -hmm. uh, the unions are stepping forward from other nations, other than my three favorite little islands, which is Haiti, Guadeloupe, and Martinique. Uh, they were the three thing. that initially started out rebelling against France, because yeah. when Haiti rebelled, Martinique jumped up. Yeah. Um, that was Guadeloupe jumped up. We talking about the, uh, the early that was 18th century. Beginning. That's right. Yeah. That's right. I mean, 1790s, that's way going back. 1790s. That's before uh, our founding fathers. But so Haiti far, got yeah. its independence. Yeah. The other two are still colonies, uh, uh -huh. referred to by France as departments yeah. of France. Uh, right. Oh, right. please. Yeah. Uh, but you know, this is the struggle, uh -huh. and it's a powerful struggle. And we had better know that Le Fleur's Bluff. 
mm. which has now had its own revolt, and we got a new mayor, which is a very revolutionary mayor down there. Where is that? In Jackson, now? Mississippi. Oh, in, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Oh, 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 you got a new mayor. Freedom Democratic Party. So you think there's some hope for a real democracy emerging or something? It's coming out I, of the, I don't some know about of the a people democracy, who've been But oppressed. I think there's a big that there's a, that that we had better be very very aware. That the eco socialist movement that's developing in the United Echo States. Socialist. Echo socialist oh, movement. Okay. Once it's solved, I've that's a banner on which a lot of this goes on. Do you think? This is, these are the young people. Yeah. Young people are organizing around this country. Uh huh. Uh -huh. And they're and well it comes organized. Around, they and they're bring very it right clear. Back. And the base of it is mm. New York City. Yeah, and they bring it right back. Not only to the other countries of this hemisphere, and so that's right. right back that's to the right. United that's States. And that's of the America. indigenous movement. Yeah. In one sense, because they're basing it that's on right. the indigenous. They're very. They have qualitatively indigenous ecological ties. The indigenous nations do tend to have that. That's correct. And so do the they, African nations. So, but they are basing theirs out of the West and it's really good because that's where we are. Mm -hmm, we are in mm -hmm. the West. Yeah, you got that two-row wampum. Were you familiar with that? That's coming yeah. down from the Algonquin. And yeah. they had, they, that, that informed, that was uh, Iroquois and they had, uh, it informed Ben Franklin certainly mightily and sure. also George Washington to a degree Fra uh, Jefferson in terms of the ideas that uh, informed, you know, Declaration of Independence. That's correct. This That's country, right. The whole longhouse know? tradition. So that, yeah. yeah. So that those root things are coming out of some of the root cultures that were here that we should give credence to rather than just seeing as something to be co-opted or overrun. That's right. That's right. Which and has been the attitude of the European colonization. So when you look at that and you look at Kevin and that's real struggle yeah, around yeah, he's and doing the indigenous great stuff. children and yeah. the murder of indigenous children. So we're looking at the genocide, and we're looking at the genocide not only against indigenous populations, yeah. but the genocide against the African populations. And we, and we could look at these kind of things, and we just we just had this debt ceiling. It just got solved yesterday. No. And they, they <laughs> were they about, it. <laughs> they've got this tea party thing going on here in the country, and I don't know, and the, you know, that kind of thing. And it's coming down, and that thing with Gaddafi we mentioned before, he may have had a system of economics that he was going to they could have uh, in a in a in a in a uh, historical leadership way had to solve the supply and demand problem of how you're going to get buying power in the hands of people when you have automation sure. doing a lot of production and all that. He may have had a pattern that was relevant that could have avoided all that debt ceiling stuff that they've been arguing about. And it looks like they're going to do it again in another three or four months. They'll yeah. bring all this thing about not attaching the. Uh, the, the, the earning power of, a, of an investment that's made that's going to pay for itself in five or seven years so that you're not based, based on past savings alone is what can be invested mm -hmm. to get some ownership of that into the hands of the people as a way of distributing demand in a world where the automation is very clearly becoming uh, responsible for production. And Qaddafi had a model that could have been applied rather than just uh, attacked. Well, I, well, they, they can attack it if they want to, but the Green Book is not going to go away because I don't think so either. The I Green think Book is spread all across martyr. Africa and all this across many of the countries of Asia. Yeah, and I'm sure Europe. So it's not going to go away. I have not measured the Green Book in terms of people's discussion of it in in South you and know Central where America, murder, but I can tell you, yeah, they say they say partners they, and and, and, yeah. and not and partners, not wage not wage earners. They yeah, actually oh, yeah. said the way it's wage slavery, and it is in a way, and people are. Anyway, but that a lot of the left is based on that. But anyway, it's a time, feisty time. Are you, how are you feeling these days, honey, about things uh, uh, in terms of the... Mass? There's a lot of rumbling going. There's a whole lot of rumbling going on all over the place and many, many I circles. keep hearing John Brown's name all over oh, the place. Oh, right, right. <laughs> I mean, I'm being serious. John Brown's body uh, lies over. John Brown's yeah. name all over the yeah. place. And well, when I was in Haiti... You do, down, down in the other countries of this hemisphere? You know, Haiti has a street name for John Brown. Do they really? Okay, yes, right. it's been there for years. Yeah, right, right, since, right. Since, since, yeah. They, since they got their independence, it right. has been John Brown. Now, that has uh, rumblings of uh, not, not a totally un... Uh, un uh, uh, what do you call it? Peaceful approach to things, and let's all. I think people together. are saying, you know, we've, See, we've we'll, tried, we have we've tried, we, they've tried their best. Yeah. And when the people have tried their best and have no other options, yeah, I think we're going to see this whole hemisphere go the in a direction hemisphere. that we don't want it to go. Yeah. Because we've already suffered, especially the black communities, we've yeah, suffered absolutely enough killing and, and yeah, pain oh, and horrible yeah. mass racist right. madness. Yeah. But um. 
when you leave with people, no other option. Have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what happens. Yeah, and it, it, yes. it is happening. And now they've come into this point. We're going to be confronted with that again. And then they're going to have a committee where they're going to try and deal with the issues that are involved and all that sort of thing. They're reifying the institutions we've inherited out of history and what they're going to be coming up against. Maybe the, maybe the Green Book will come up in those, con <laughs> those uh, discussions to where they'll get an economic order that's in, fu that's in touch with the future rather than reified, outdated institutions out of the past that people have vested interests in, mm -hmm. which is mm -hmm. a larger problem. Mm -hmm. But it's basically an economic, uh, theoretical economic order that they don't have a model relevant to the future. That's right. That's right. We've Perhaps entered, Dr. King said, the, you know, we have The powerful of the world don't have a model that's worthy of any more than feudalism was worthy of the industrial age it was coming. The thing they have now that's right. is not worthy of what the future requires. And there's uh, inherent contradictions that are coming more and more to inform mass meetings and senses and intuitive yeah. issues and so forth, that there has to be a big change coming. That was a saying, I don't know where I heard it from, but it was so righteous that we came into the 20th century mm. uh, with an age of industrialization and technology beginning yeah. to take off. Yeah. But socially, we were not prepared for it. Uh, right. So that right. the mind was not prepared. Yeah. We were still very much agriculturalists who came in. And I don't know that we are prepared for the 21st century either. I don't think I don't we think are. we've evolved there. Yeah. And so that Qaddafi's model mm -hmm. Um, well, it was one that should have been given credence. And it will be given credence. I oh, don't, you I, still I, think? I, I yeah, don't okay, think we, yeah, I yeah. Mean, I've been trying to get English copies of it. I have it in, in, in the Arabic. But yeah. we need to begin to talk about that. Yeah, yeah. We'll see that. We need to begin to talk about the fact that more and more unions are beginning to stand up a little bit and become more aggressive. Well, I wish they AFL, could be. Uh, CIO has a real war going on internally with well, it. Well, I hope they do. But I'll tell you, they're back uh, in the 50s and so forth, the AFL-CIO and the unions had, you know, 40, 50 percent of the nation was unionized down to about no, 5 percent of the private sector now. now. Yeah. See, so the, the, the power the, of the union. About 13 percent of, no, about 30 some percent of the, of the civil service workers of uh, State employees, well, federal employees. True, yeah. But they I mean are in still the there. private sector. But in terms of the private sector, yeah, it's, it's just about dead. It's less than seven percent. Yeah, I know. It's yeah, yeah, that's right. It isn't so they and they, they, they never could have they should have they could have argued for, let's say, the the workers of the world, some sort of a thing where they could have a way of getting income only through their the only way they can legitimately get it is through their work. Yes. Or through their labor. But they could have had a thing where they would form capital in a way where they'd get some ownership that would bring them uh, income to be able to buy the things that the market's able to produce. Yes. And uh, maybe in an abundant capability to offset the fact that weapons now are species lethal, yes. which is another thing yeah. that hangs over our head. And they still keep fighting these wars and everything to reify these outdated institutions. There needs to be a big change. Yeah, well, America needs a war because it's the only way it's ever been able to keep its economy going. Uh -huh. It's a boost for the economy yeah. every time they take off somewhere well, the boost and destroy for the, yeah, for another the, group of people. How did in two nations we have bases in? Military yeah, right, bases. I mean, I mean yeah. come on now. Are there any that there were we only don't? Six that, it was only 60 when Obama came into yeah, office. Right. And most folks don't realize that since this brother has been in office, mm -hmm. this uh, black brother, yeah, hey, my brother man, yeah. since he's been in office, we have expanded to 102 nations. And they got these drones now, aren't they? Oh, something? the drones so that any child can get their hands on. I yeah. mean, come on now. I mean, it's, we have been at an age of absolute insanity, if you ask me. Well, it may be to reify or to uh, undergird the institutions, it's like, there's well, there's still remnants of feudalism in yeah. the order. We still celebrate the Queen of England or the uh, the crowned heads of Europe that held for a thousand years yeah. after Rome. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we still... And more and more, so, what is going slowly. on with that anyway? Yeah, yeah. I noticed Obama ran over to England to kiss her fingers. Well, yeah, it's still I think there. That was her it's fingers. part of the inherited... But, I mean, it... History moves on, and we're going to have some sort of a new kind of way or vision, particularly the young people, maybe, if they can get their act together or something, right. to come up with something that's relevant to something new that's a borning within the, uh, within the technological extension of consciousness that is the human condition now. And it's, it's a, I did a pro, I've mentioned it a few times on programs, and Isaac Asimov, the great yeah. uh, science fiction, yes. he wrote The Laws of Robotics and so on. Robotics are taking over <laughs> all the production <laughs> capability that used to be done by human labor and yeah. it isn't needed yeah. and everything. 
But he said, this is the, defi this is the, 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 T-H-E, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. defining generation. That would be, we're a little, I'm, I'm up in the e upper end of that, but the mm -hmm. young people are coming. This generation, uh, 50 to 2050 or something like that, the defining generation in an evolutionary means that we're coming maybe to the end of, uh, as in evolution, the homo sapiens spirit, uh, experience, uh, evolutionary species appeared, we're all Africans, that we appeared in Africa, and we're now coming to a thing where we may be coming to the end of the relevance of what's been called the homo sapien experience. We may be coming into a new relationship in the universe, not just a political mm -hmm. change, not, or not just a historical change, but an, a, a species, Mm. Uh, the beginning of a, the the beginning of the precursor things to the emerging a new almost like species in universe that's emerging out of the evolutionary mm -hmm. process. If these right wing Republicans have that way, the roaches will be the next species. Well, so <laughs> well <laughs> blow us to pieces. Well, but um, that, yeah, but we can't take that so kindly. No, no, I'm not taking that catch with it. I mean, I'm saying them they have their way. If we don't deal with what uh, the Obama the ascendancy of an Obama to the presidency uh -huh. has met. We know that he has not been any great revolutionary type character. Well, we I know that his, his policies have not been that different than those that preceded him, but well, he was black. Yeah. And so this, this preoccupation with race. Oh, well, that's been and race here, ideology. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I think is the, is the thing that's going to push America to the brink. It's just. It's a right. preoccupation. Rape it's crazy. It's insane. It's insane. We Nine million people would have been, women and children would have been um, without food and health care under this, if, if, this, if this piece had, had gone through. Nine oh, million in the United States. Let me read that to you. Okay? You mean, you mean the thing they just settled yesterday? Yeah. Kinda. Nine million women and children. they kicked the can down the road. As they yeah, because you know, when you look at what, what happened. It's going to come up again in three or four months. Or yeah, something. we don't know that it won't come up. and We don't know that nine million won't be cut from the road. But it's all about economics. Because it's all about women and children. But most of that nine million, women and infant children, the Department of Agriculture will cut off support for the Women and Infant Children's Program, mm -hmm. which helps pregnant women and new moms buy healthy food and provides nutritional information and health care referrals. The program reaches some 9 million Americans. Uh -huh, uh -huh. The USDA estimates most states have funds to continue their program for a week or so, but they'll likely be unable to sustain operations for a longer period. Emergency funds may run out by the end of October. That's had this madness continued and the debt ceiling not been extended. Yeah. Well, you see what that is, is... But who are those nine million? That's basically black and brown women and poor white women. Mm -hmm. That is what that is. That's yeah. the poverty stricken and the color groups. Right. That's right. They're the ones that have always suffered. That's right. That's I what mean, I'm saying. But history. you imagine nine million being in, uh, without food after a few weeks? Yeah. Right. Health care without And then weeks? that applies to the less advantaged people of the world in general. The, those, hey, yeah. those, there's an old saying, I think, those who have get. Mm -hmm. And those who have the accumulated capital Damn, the have guy. the ability to make an investment that's going to pay for itself out of its future earnings. It's not based upon the collateralization, isn't based upon past savings, mm -hmm. which gives mm -hmm. an advantage to somebody who has past savings. Mm -hmm. They can mm -hmm. make investment. That's right. And then they pay, that investment pays for itself out of its future productiveness within about five to six years on the whole. The, the, the Russians used to have a five-year plan or something. There was something to be said for that. Yeah. And then it starts, it, it pays for itself. That's how people who have money get money. They got money to invest in something that's going to pay for itself out of its future earnings rather than depending upon the savings they've been able to garner and squirrel away to make an investment that's going mm -hmm. to be dealing with the future. And if we consider the last uh, five years, uh, 2008 to the present, we remember Millions lost their homes. Uh, you yeah. know the mortgage madness, and that these, this is a part of that group that will form that nine million people who have been pushed back into poverty. Yeah, yeah. So we began to look at this spiral of events and really consider the last five years, yeah. and then this debt ceiling madness, this government running without funds for 
what, what, two, three weeks here? Well, um, yeah, 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 yeah. You yeah, know, so yeah. when you consider that, they are sequester. Consider, yeah, 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 who suffers? They call it's it the debt, but what it should be is people should be turned in, they should be turned, linked in structurally to the productive capability that's going to emerge that's out right. of the investment in the future because it's expanding. We have a capability, it seems to me, not only of just, the, I think, if I'm not mistaken, that just the Trident submarines, the, the mm. fleet of flight Trident submarines have enough firepower that are in the hands of the United States, the President of the United States, mm -hmm. that have the capability, if they're to be unleashed, in capability, yeah. if yeah. they're unleashed, would mean, apparently from the modeling, the end of the whole Homo sapiens species. Sure. Now that's something kind of new. Mr. Mm -hmm. Isaac Asimov says this is something new. It's not yeah. just like a little phase in history mm -hmm. or something mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. And then on the other hand, we have a technologically augmented capability mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, with good design and so forth of taking care of all of humanity in a way that we've never had historically. Yeah. It was a condition of scarcity out of which we came. And now we've we got competitors in that in China, Brazil. Yeah. I mean, we got this upsurge now that America needs to begin to remember uh -huh. from new competitors yeah. that the stage is not empty. Russia is still there, but the stage is not empty, and these new competitors got numbers that we don't have. But it is an interconnected world system sure. that we have. It's all connected. In China, they got they talk about three million people have been brought up, some out of poverty and all that, in Shanghai and Peking mm -hmm, and all that. Mm -hmm. But they got a billion people living, just starving practically, right. on one billion you know people living on a dollar a day or less. Yeah. The problem is still there in economic, and we don't have a way to link the masses of the people into the way this productive case with ecological addendum. We got the ability mm -hmm. to use ecological concerns and finance things in a way that gets buying power into the hands of the mass of the people. And if they don't get that, they're not going to have the money to be able to clear the market of what is a. We have a productive capability. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They don't have the mm -hmm. market buying, effective buying power to clear the market of what can be produced to improve the living condition of all homo sapiens as well as in the catalogical context. That's because we got this, the, the, so this, this, a, this group of capitalists from the United States who have taken capital investments to Asia because a lot of what we talk about are um, uh, American businessmen who have gone overseas uh, going to Central and South America oh, yeah. and made this investment. Well, and they weren't able to do that until just yesterday. That's it, right, it took, that's it, right. took a, it took a, a revolution in transportation, containerization, that's right. in this that's to right. build that's this right. world. Uh, so you, you could take a workforce out, you could take the capital out, yeah. you could take the resources out, and now we've got competitors all over the world, including China. Yeah, right. Where yeah. we have these businessmen, yeah. our own businessmen located. But the emphasis has not been on human. Right. Because it was on human, you take Uganda uh -huh. and not go in there and create all these crazy wars mm -hmm. and be looking for gold and diamond and silver and oil and yeah, whatever. Right, 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 Uganda right. can feed the world. Mm. Ivory Coast could feed the world. Mm. You know, that just I remember Ali yeah, Trake. Remember yeah. Ali Trake? You know, sure. Ali? He said Sudan could feed the world. Could feed the you world, the, the entire world. world. Yeah, 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 right. Without right. a question. Yeah. So could feed it, the world. So to have a world where it's possible for Let's say maybe it's possible for every human being to realize their absolutely full potential, sure. like in an orchestra where everybody's sure. And that would be like a liberation, a jump up time, coming to the end of a long climb up Mount Sisyphus that has been human history. Yeah, you just and scared the right wing to death. What's wrong with you? Well, say I'm it louder, sure. maybe they'll go away. Well, uh, <laughs> but with Lou, but, but with, with Gaddafi, he was talking about. He didn't do away with the private sector or anything. No. He said those investments that are made should be d uh, done participatory democracy, That's decision right. making, right. and also it should be investment uh, where they have a partnership. They have an ownership stake in the capital uh, equipment of the productive system that gives income coming to everybody rather than to the, the few. It's all concentrated yeah, because in you the don't hands own the land. of a few. You don't own the land. Not only the land, but all the resources right. yeah. that are financed land. through the process. Because the resources come out of the land. Because they've yeah. always been tied in only to a labor relationship for the masses. Yes. I mean, the kings were in the castle eating all That's kinds right. of things, <laughs> and the people were wallowing around Stop in the mud. Stop the death. Gaddafi yeah. said, no, he built that river. Yeah. Right across the desert. Yeah, and that's history. Man-made river across the desert. Right. And, we're and I know it worked because when I was there, we had fruits and vegetables, but the fruits in the morning, just gorgeous We fruits. tapped that fossil water. And then water, vegetables, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but, I, but that, that, 
That and that was started with a country in in uh, 1969 when he came in. They were about the poorest country That's in the right. world. They got everything up for everybody just socially. Yes. And he called it socialism. So yeah. socially, yeah. they got everybody got their education from five percent to ninety six percent literacy. Yes. Women in the university, universities, all people own and, their and own women home independent and free. Uh, yes, that is. They could even drive cars. You can't do that in Saudi Arabia. No, Saudi Arabia you can't. Mm -hmm. But it looked like Southern California. The yeah. uh, the university was there and everything, and he, he he was doing all of that. And that and he one of the things he did is he forced the United States to leave what Wheelis Air Force Base, That's right. the major place of the United States. Uh, domination of the African continent, he yeah. forced them to leave Wheelis Air Force Base item number one when he yes. came into power. Yes, yes. Now that's something that the people who want to have an Air Force Base or what other neo-colonial control over that continent and its resources and everything would take some umbrage at. And I think it involved a whole lot of D, uh, DI, DIA is about five times the budget of the CIA. Yes, a lot is. of shenanigans going on to protect the interests of the one percent who own all the assets and are yeah. counting themselves like kings in the castle. Yeah, but you remember he also was bright enough not only to talk about the satellite but to talk about an African. They started the United States Bank, of rather than IMF and, and the World Bank. He said, "Now we have an yeah. African yeah. bank. That's we don't right. need that." But when he said that 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 You're denominating that, something other than gold was that what it was? That's and right. He, yeah, yeah. He, went, he he moved toward a, wow. pushing toward a gold standard. Yeah, right. And when he announced that he was pushing toward the gold standard, within uh, six weeks he was out of power. Yeah, 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 yeah. Within yeah. six weeks they were on him, and a few months he was dead. Well, we have these heroes. What if uh, if King George had been successful in killing George Washington, as they were in doing that, then George Washington probably would have been if history like Spartacus tried mm -hmm. Jesus mm -hmm. tried yeah. to have some ju elemental justice mm -hmm. over there in the context mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and usually they're just overridden by the political force the jour if George Washington had been uh, murdered let's say he'd been murdered mm -hmm. with a, mm -hmm. a, a a force eight sniper or some such comparable thing uh, probably it would have failed and there would have been just another uh, long hold of the feudal order that it held for a thousand years. Mm -hmm. A history is a hard thing to yeah, change. Yeah, for the white sector, because remember, George well, immediately the, yeah. talked about destroying the native. He the, didn't wait that 1787 yeah. when he met. I think it's in, um, whose book recently have I ran across? But anyway, I'll get it to you. Well, George Washington speaking to the Congress makes yeah. a very clear statement that the goal of the new nation mm. is to move across the land, killing the wolf with the savage right, to right. the west and then southward because this would be a nation with a common heritage, a and common, yeah. Yeah, and that's all based upon... So the natives would have been happy had that Well, that's the history happened. of yeah. the world. That's yeah. the history of the world. Political legitimacy, so-called, mm -hmm. is whoever's got the biggest club. That's right. It's called so realpolitik. If you can beat the other people on the head, then you win the water hole or you win something. Yeah, and then we and that's been the history of the human experience. And then we weren't talking about everybody here. Yeah. Yeah, because the mass white base would still remain what serfs. Yeah, they're serfs. That's yeah. what they would remain. Yeah. Uh -huh. So the property mm -hmm. and the wealthy. Right. In other words, who will rule at home? The well, war was over. Who would rule at home? Right. And home being the colony, who would rule the colony? Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. But it's the George wasn't going to rule the colony anymore. So George became the, jo the one George replaced the other. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. I don't, I mean, I, I think tactically and everything, it yeah. might be good to be able to repair, and it's good, and things do work, in a sense. Mm -hmm. I just realized that. Buses run. Things get done. There's yep. Things get done. Things work. You know, uh, you know, things get delivered. You know, things work. So you don't just overthrow something cavalierly or anything. Yeah, no. But, uh, this was well thought through. Yeah. This was a well thought through plan down to the games played with the Declaration of Independence, so that it would appeal to France, so you could get a navy. Yeah. It was well. It's well, all well it's all through. geopolitical. What's called realpolitik mm -hmm. and everything, and it's been characteristic of the whole evolution of human society. I mean, we're coming to a time, and it's been based in a material sense. In any case, always that there was not nearly enough for one group to benefit and get a better house. The other benefit. The other group had to be put down. So the, it was a uh, zero sum. If I win, you lose. You have to lose. Well, you know, That's been the basis and the accepted ontology of the world that may be changing in our generation. It's hard to get the idea that we may have gotten to the point where there is enough. 
I don't know about that, Harold, uh, because when I look at Egyptian yeah. society and I look at the invaders, yeah. they took on the names and the culture of the locals. Okay, yeah. There are groups, if you look along the East African coast, they take on, the, they come, people invade. Yeah, yeah. But they take on the names and the cultures of whatever the local is, and they just become the new, say, okay, you have Pharaoh, I'm Pharaoh now. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> right, right, right. And I'm also going to yeah. be Pharaoh Ra. Well, yeah, but you know. Uh, and it's been like that everywhere in the world. So almost. you don't kill up the locals. Yeah. yeah. But you, you have can co-opt them. That's yeah, you another work with them. I'm saying that's, that is, that, 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 in that's other words, the, yeah. that's what the Muslims are talking about when they talk about the kind of humanness, yeah. human approach, as opposed to this Western European approach, which is let's kill everything inside. Uh, well, you kill, yeah. kill, kill. You don't just come in and... Well, it probably gets moderated a little bit by thinking about, you know, co-option. There is co-option. There is Vance Packard and being able to use PR and things like that to convince people that everything's as good as it possibly can be. You know, that kind yeah. of thing has probably been part of it. But when you're wearing chains, that's a lot, it's a little difficult to, to uh, being scalped every day. That's a little difficult. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> to pass yeah. on. Yeah, yeah, And that yeah. is what people yeah. got because right, they could have... Right. There could have been this takeover and working with the natives. Do you think there's been progress? I and mean, we've only got a couple minutes left. Are we making any progress as a human society within an ecological order, making progress towards some glory you know, land? I think all of us have to say that, that, that in terms of the, 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 the potential moment. So the potential for, for, yeah. for, 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 and we've been talking about that, the potential to feed the world, the potential everybody. to give the world health care, the everybody. potential to house the world. Right. That potential is there. It is there. The potential is there to fight disasters. That mother, because Mother Nature is not kind. Yeah, right. She's no, gonna do her thing whether we like it or not. Tooth and claw. That's yeah. right. Everything's so, eating everything else. Yeah, yeah. So, but we could. We, we we have the potential to be able to, to to work with Mother Nature and to live through all of that. Now, there's some people who say we always have. My contention is it isn't possible for I don't that think to have been done, I don't think except we have within had, a yeah. time frame. It's like a maturation, like a yeah. pregnancy, and we're yeah. coming to a time of qualitative yeah. transformation that's called for, like leaving the womb mm -hmm. of where mm -hmm. we've been for 200,000 years as a species. It's a little hard to get your mind around. We might be the defining generation of 10,000 generations mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. our species. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. we don't hear that much from our political leadership. It's all based on reifying or reestablishing institutions we're formulated in one condition that's being radically transformed at the level of capability and yeah. we don't have a vision of that. We need it. I think if anybody, if it's going to come from it, I think it's going to come from people like Coley and Clark. I don't know about With that. But I'm not that old African spirit will say there's a yeah. greater truth somewhere. Thank you. Yeah. A high law. There's justice. Is there any? Is yeah. there any? Is there any gospel? That was, song? They, they were resisting. Is there any Christianity? Gospel? And we and we think they're Christian songs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's really funny. Is there any? Is there any? Is there any uh, gospel song that says in that great up day in the morning or something like that? We're going to get to. Sing it, girl. Can you Make sing it? up morning. It exists. The you know that great yeah. waking up yeah, morning. morning. Fare you well, fare you well. Oh, say right. goodbye. Well, that, that might be the way to say goodbye to the audience, but that, bye might, bye. that might be on a really large scale. <laughs> I'd rather uh, deal with the great uh, truth somewhere. Okay. There's a great to truth somewhere. Just go on searching until you find it. It's out of Ghana. There's a great to truth. And it was passed through. And it was passed through in the original language. Du Bois uh, does a very nice little piece on it. Yeah. But there's a greater truth. Because it br give me this brainwash. And the song goes, there's a greater truth in this now. There's mm -hmm. a high law. All right. There is justice. There is peace. There is love somewhere. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. I want to get representation for you because you're going to become a, a rock star, right? Your pleasure. Coley Clark, one of New York's finest and one of our major resources. Thanks a lot for all oh, the good Oh, it's always my pleasure, in. Harold. Thank you Coming so much. Coming back again uh, tomorrow. Please do tune in. Thanks a lot, Coley, for such a very well-led life. Thank you. That continues. Thank you for being admirably there. Admirably and improving <laughs> all the time. Thanks for viewing.